all honesty, I don't really know what I'm making today. Um, I sort of just wanted to make stuff uh, and see what happened. I used to feel really self-conscious about making things for the sake of it. I always figured, I, uh, you know, I need to make something for a Warhammer army or a Dungeons and Dragons session. I think I really just need to start making things because I want to, because I mean, that's the real motivation behind everything. Sometimes I just label things or justify things to myself because it's easier. I probably shouldn't feel that way. I can't find my sculpting tools, so just saying fuck it. And I'm gonna use a uh, paintbrush. <laughs> <laughs> you want to hear an unrelatable story? Um, I was going to leave. I was about to leave. I was like, I really want to keep working, but I can't be bothered making any more kit bashes today. What do I do? And I really wanted to make a mandrake. And I was like, yeah, but then I have to try to convince the camera why I should be making a mandrake or explain that I don't need to make a mandrake. And I thought, ah, oh, now I can't be bothered making a mandrake anymore. Anyway, I'm making a mandrake. <laughs> A few months ago, I think I started referring to myself as an artist when people asked what I did um, because it was much easier to explain. Now, I feel like I'm starting to believe it, but I don't know if um, it's uh, well deserved because I don't really know what it means to be an artist. All my favorite artists, I think, all have a message or something they're trying to communicate. And uh, I, I don't know, I guess I need to try to find my voice and uh, to do that, I think it's a good idea just to start experimenting with what I know and what inspires me and um, see where that takes me. Have you ever seen art toys when they like do alternate colorways and stuff as something a bit special? Well, I was really inspired by like turquoise ghosty colorways that you see in a lot of vinyl toys and stuff. And uh, this is sort of my alternate colorway of my original mandrakes up there. I think I like it more than the original. Way more. Ideally, it would be really cool to put these in one of the wooden boxes that I have and put like a lamp or something in there and have like a traveling like botanary kit or something like that. <clears throat> For now, they can just decorate my studio though. I've been thinking a lot about like the morals or the ethics of kit bashing. If I'm making something from everyone else's parts, I'm coming to conclusions that could only be made from other people's ideas. Is what I make at the end truly mine? I don't quite know. Originally, it was for practical reasons that my models and stuff had a lot of flaws. My sculpting was shit because I was making as many models as I could to bulk out a whole Warhammer army. But now doing one-off pieces, I sort of like showing the flaws too. I like showing the points of connection between two different models, three different models. I like showing how I've tried to join seams together or transition things or create my own textures and make that really evident, sort of where that kit bash is a mark of pride, that something I've made is well and truly made from things that other people have made. You know what I mean? Okay, so I've painted this guy up now, and my plan is to make him sort of like a retro, sort of bootleg action figure type uh, art piece. 
Really inspired by one of my favorite artists ever, The Suck Lord, who has been just a big inspiration for just about everything I've done, really. And uh, it's a bit of an homage to him, I guess. Oh, might be close. I salvaged this sticker from one of the WizKids models that I hacked up to make this. So yeah, hopefully it sells for more than $18. <laughs> As a teenager, a very young teenager, I uh, was obsessed with like vinyl toys because it was very punk. It was sort of like very street art, um, but it was still really nerdy and cool. And um, a lot of the values of that sort of scene and style, I transferred into my miniature work. And um, it's sort of nice to contribute to that scene in uh, just a little way. And like, I'll probably never do anything like this again because um, I don't think I can really contribute much else to this conversation, um, this world that's already really saturated and filled with people that I really respect and admire. But um, yeah, it's nice to do, to do something relating to that part of my um, uh, aesthetic development. I don't know. <laughs> if you don't know, I've got a tabletop RPG called Arcane Ugly, and um, I asked patrons what of these creations they would like to see introduced as a monster or an item in the game, in Arcane Ugly. And uh, they said they wanted to see this Cthulhu. Cthulhu at home, bootleg Cthulhu. They wanted to see that in Arcane Ugly. And I got to agree. So uh, yeah, I'll put some stats on the screen for him if you're playing Arcane Ugly at home. If I put it on eBay, it will be on my Instagram. So that is miscast.co on Instagram. All right, I'll uh, see you pretty soon, I reckon. Bye.